Oh. the best dad in the whole world. Oh. He shot himself on the front porch of his family's home in Texas. Over the years, child actors have brought a different kind of appeal to Hollywood movies, with many viewers obsessing over the innocent, mischievous, or outrightly cute characters that they play on screen. However, it seems many of these child actors find it very difficult to transition into adult roles as they often tend to fade in relevance over the years, causing them to most times disappear from the big screens despite their early success. Most times, they tend to be forgotten. This is what makes it very difficult to track their whereabouts after their time on screen, to the point that even cases where some of them are lost to death remain largely underreported. For this reason, we have made a list of 10 former child actors that we bet you didn't know have died. Number 1. Tommy Reddick Tommy Reddick was a child actor best known for his role as Jeff Miller on the classic TV show Lassie. Born on December 10, 1941 in Queens, New York, Reddick started his career in entertainment at a young age. His big break came when he was cast as the original boy companion to Lassie from 1954 to 1957, playing Jeff for four seasons. He became a darling in most American households because of his charisma and acting ability. Before Lassie, Tommy had already starred in movies with icons such as Marilyn Monroe in River of No Return in 1954 and Ethel Barrymore in The Five Thousand Fingers of Dr. T back in 1953. However, Tommy faced one major issue that has been common with child actors. His success in Lassie made it difficult afterward for Reddick to find parts that would let him grow into an adult actor. As the acting jobs became thin, Reddick faced the challenges of post-child stardom with personal and professional difficulties. After he left acting in the 1960s, Reddick struggled for several years against various changes and financial misery. He went on to become one of the pioneers in the then new software development industry, producing programs for early personal computers. Unfortunately, Reddick lived a short life, as he died from a heart attack on February 15, 1996, at age 54. His life is remembered in his legacy and contributions to the entertainment industry and technology. Tommy Reddick remains one of the most beloved figures in television history, best remembered for his role as Jeff Miller and his groundbreaking work with computers, making a successful second career after the roller coaster of changes that came with his early fame. Number 2. Matthew Garber Matthew Garber was a British child actor, best remembered for the role of Michael Banks in Disney's 1964 classic Mary Poppins, he was born on March 25, 1956, in Stepney, London. Through family connections, Garber was discovered by Disney casting directors, who gave him his first film role in 1963, starring with Karen Dotris in The Three Lives of Thomasina. The two young actors proved to have such chemistry that Disney cast them again as siblings in Mary Poppins. The film thrust Garber into international stardom with a mischievous, curious portrayal of Michael Banks. Garber's wide-eyed innocence and charming performance alongside Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke cemented him as one of the most memorable stars in the cherished classic. He would go on to reunite with Karen Dutrice in The Gnome Mobile in 1967 for another Disney feature before retiring at age 11 to attend school. Unfortunately, Garber's life was cut short in 1977 when he contracted hepatitis while traveling in India. The illness rapidly developed into pancreatitis. He died on June 13, 1977, at the tender age of 21 in London. His death at such a tender age in the peak of his youth sent a shock to all who remembered him as that child actor from Mary Poppins. The late Matthew Garber, though having a short career, left his indelible mark on the history of Disney. In 2004, he was posthumously declared a Disney legend and left his enduring mark as part of the studio's golden era of family films. Even to this date, he is remembered by fans as the endearing Michael Banks, whose performance helped seal the deal for the timeless classic Mary Poppins. Number 3. Michael Cuccioni 
Michael Cuccioni's story was a really sad one, presenting a young talent who faced challenges beyond his control. Michael Cuccione was a Canadian actor, singer, and advocate who gained widespread fame through the fictional boy band Together. Born on January 5, 1985 in Burnaby, British Columbia, it became very clear from a very early age that Michael had a melodious voice and could act. His life took a turn for the worse when, at age nine, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Not wanting to be defined by this illness, Michael took his experiences and raised cancer awareness. He wrote songs and created an album entitled Make a Difference, from which the proceeds went to fund cancer research. His advocacy extended to the formation of the Michael Cuccioni Foundation, which exists today in support of cancer research. In 1999, Michael took on the role of Jason Q.T. McKnight in MTV's mock film Together, which was about a boy band. It became such a success that it was spun out into a television series. His health continued to be an issue, including medical consequences from his cancer treatment, but he attracted a hardcore group of fans with the role of QT. Sadly, Michael was soon beset by worsening health due to respiratory complications from his earlier treatments. By December 2000, his condition had worsened even more until January 13, 2001 just eight days after his 16th birthday, which was also the day Michael Cuccioni passed away. His death was a great loss to the entertainment world, as well as to the advocacy against cancer. Michael Cuccioni is remembered not just for his role in Together, but also because of his courage and commitment towards trying to make a difference in the life of another human being, especially those fighting for their lives against cancer. His legacy lives on through his foundation and the inspiration he provided to many minds. Number four, John Paul Stewart. John Paul Stewart was born on March 27, 1984 in Escondido, California. As a child actor, he is best remembered for playing Alexander Rojenko, the son of Worf, in Star Trek, The Next Generation. Talented in front of the camera, he began his career at four years of age. In 1990, John was the first actor to play the role of Worf's son, a character to which he brought much emotional depth. In 1993, Stewart made his breakout performance playing Johnny Venaro in the sleeper hit family film Little Giants. The charisma and boyish charm put on display with his character intrigued audiences of all ages and, in a nutshell, gave him an overnight stardom. He would further his acting career by starring in the ABC sitcom Grace Under Fire with the role of Quentin Kelly. However, Stewart found the pressures of child stardom overwhelming, especially in the wake of his experiences in Grace Under Fire. He left the acting world at age 12, seeking to live out his life out of the public eye. In the years that followed, John Paul Stewart reinvented himself as a musician taking up the stage name Johnny P. Jules and assuming frontman duties for the punk band Problems. In a tragic turn of events, Stewart died by his own hand on January 1, 2018, at the young age of 33. His death was later confirmed as a suicide and in its shocking nature, took many fans and friends by surprise who remembered him for his earlier successful years and then later as an artist. John Paul Stewart is remembered for being a child actor and also a musician, leaving behind him a legacy of talent and creativity touching so many. Number 5. Heather O'Rourke Heather O'Rourke captured America's attention as one of the most popular child actresses of her time. Born on December 27, 1975 in Santee, California, Heather O'Rourke would later climb to fame as Carol Ann in the Poltergeist film series. Heather O'Rourke was discovered at five years old by the great director Steven Spielberg over a meal with her mother at the MGM Commissary. Spielberg cast her in the 1982 film Poltergeist, and that year, her line, They're Here, reached iconic status. This face of an angel and the nature of an innocent child made Heather people's darling, and she played the very same role in Poltergeist II in 1986 and in Poltergeist III in 1988. Aside from this well-known Poltergeist series, O'Rourke appeared in several popular television series like Happy Days, Webster, 
and the new Leave It to Beaver. It was clear to everyone that the girl was promising because of such beautiful acting talent, which was the reason the next news about her was shocking to everyone. Tragically, Heather died from illness at the beginning of 1988. Apparently suffering from a congenital intestinal abnormality, however, Heather was first diagnosed with Crohn's disease. In February 1988, Heather developed a critical condition as her intestinal stenosis led to septic shock. Despite undergoing an emergency surgery, Heather passed away on February 1, 1988, at only 12 years of age. Such a promising talent was cut short. Her sudden death sent shockwaves across Hollywood and to her fans worldwide. Heather O'Rourke was one of the most memorable child actors of her generation, and her work, especially in the Poltergeist series, continues to enchant new audiences to this day. Number 6. Sammy Kane Craft Sammy Kane Craft was a phenomenally talented athlete and fine actress, probably best known for her role as Amanda Wurlitzer in the 2005 remake of The Bad News Bears. Born on April 2, 1992, in Livingston, New Jersey, Sammy immediately established herself as not just an actress but also as a great athlete. She was also a great baseball player, and her talents didn't go unnoticed by casting directors when they needed someone who would be able to act and throw a fastball similar to her movie character. Sammy surely had the talent and athletic ability to make her stand out, specifically in her portrayal of Amanda, the tomboyish pitcher in The Bad News Bears. Of course, while having a natural acting talent, her heart stayed with sports. All her life, Sammy continued to shine with many different athletic pursuits. Outside of her acting and athletic talents, Sammy even played music, having once been part of a band with her brother. She continued into creative avenues but remained close to her love of sports. It is so sad to say that Sammy was taken from this world in a car accident on October 9, 2012, in Los Angeles. The car she was driving in had gone onto the freeway and struck a tractor trailer. Despite the intervention by emergency services, Sammy died at the scene. Her sudden death really shook her family, friends, and fans. Sammy Kane Craft is remembered for her role in the film The Bad News Bears, not only for her life full of zest, but also for her fantastic sports performance and her bright future that was cut off so tragically. Number 7. Sawyer Sweeten Sawyer Sweeten was an American child actor best known for his character Jeffrey Barone in the popular CBS sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond. On May 12, 1995 in Brownwood, Texas, Sawyer was born into an acting family with a twin brother named Sullivan Sweeten and an older sister, Madeline. The three siblings were cast in Everybody Loves Raymond in 1996 when Sawyer and Sullivan were just 16 months old to play the twin sons of Ray Romano's character, Ray Barone. The show ran from 1996 to 2005 for a total of nine seasons, all of which he appeared as Jeffrey Barone. He played the role of the quiet twin who was somewhat shy, and because of this, fans loved him. He grew up on television and became famous alongside his family. However, after Everybody Loves Raymond, Sawyer mostly retreated from the limelight and only took a few roles since then living life away from Hollywood. Sadly, on April 23, 2015, Sawyer Sweeten took his own life in his family's Texas home when he was 19 years old. The news came as a shock to fans and cast members who had watched him grow up on the screen. His family chose to talk about his mental health awareness after his tragic incident and shared that he had been fighting it in secret. The sad death of Sawyer Sweeten was just another poignant example of the pressures put on young actors. He is fondly remembered for his work in Everybody Loves Raymond and a bright future that tragically was cut short. His legacy remains through his family, friends, and fans who loved the work he did. Number 8. Dustin Diamond Diamond's case was another struggle with an ailment that cut his promising life short. Dustin Diamond was an American actor and comedian known especially for his role as Samuel Powers on the popular television show Saved by the Bell. Born January 7, 1977 in San Jose, California, Diamond began acting at a tender age but his role as the geeky and nerdy Screech made him a household name. He appeared in the original Saved by the Bell series from 1989 until 1993 
and continued in its spin-offs, including Saved by the Bell, The College Years and Saved by the Bell, The New Class. Notwithstanding the show's success, Diamond failed to ever rise above his typecast character of Screech, and moving forward, his career since Saved by the Bell was always on a turbulent track. He tried stand-up comedy, reality television, and various other low-budget films but could never find that same level of success outside the confines of the aforementioned popular teen show. The later years were riddled with legal and personal troubles for Diamond. He published a scandalous memoir in 2006, Behind the Bell, a very unsubtle and unrealistic rumination about scandal behind Saved by the Bell, which pushed many people to speak out against him. He made headlines for his involvement in a 2014 bars fight, which got him some weeks in jail. Sadly, Diamond had been diagnosed with stage 4 small cell carcinoma, a form of lung cancer, in 2020. He died on February 1, 2021, following a very short battle against the illness at the age of 44. Though Diamond struggled with many issues throughout his life, he is chiefly remembered as the unforgettable screech in the popular television sitcom that won millions of fans. His memory lives on in pop culture since Saved by the Bell continued to perform well even after his death. Number 9. Dominique Dunn this one was a talented young actress who held the most famous role of the older daughter Donna Freeling in the horror classic Poltergeist, 1982. She was born on November 23, 1959 in Santa Monica, California, into a prominent Hollywood family. Her father, Dominic Dunn, was a famous writer and producer, while her brother Griffin Dunn was an actor and director. After attending acting schools in Los Angeles, Dominique began securing roles in shows like Heart to Heart, Fame, and Hill Street Blues. She was cast in Poltergeist, which was a real launching pad for Dominique's charisma and abilities as an actress. Interest in her talent was building and she was poised to start a very promising career. Unfortunately for her, life had other plans for her. Tragically, shortly after Poltergeist had been released, Dominique's life was violently taken from her. She was in an abusive relationship with a chef named John Sweeney in 1982, and Sweeney strangled Dominique into a coma on October 30, 1982, after an argument erupted outside her West Hollywood home. She was sustained for five days on life support systems and eventually died on November 4, 1982, at age 22. Eventually, Sweeney was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and received a sentence of slightly over three years in prison which was highly protested due to the leniency of the sentence. Her death left a deep scar in Hollywood as her family fought hard against domestic violence. Dominique Dunn is best remembered not only for her talent, but for the tragic end to such a bright future, continuing to be an emblem in the fight against domestic abuse. Number 10. Benji Gregory Benji Gregory was born Benjamin Gregory Hertzberg on May 26, 1978, in Panorama City, California. He is best known for playing Brian Tanner, the youngest son on the popular 1980s sitcom ALF. Born into a family steeped in the entertainment business, having had a cinematographer father and actor uncles, Gregory got into acting at an early age. Before landing his breakthrough gig with ALF from 1986 to 1990, Gregory had spent plenty of time on screen in plenty of television commercials and guest starred in shows like The A-Team and Fantasy Island. He played Brian Tanner, the sweet and somewhat naive child in the household into which ALF, the alien from the planet Melmac, crash-landed and joined the family. Gregory's portrayal of Brian positioned him as one of the most recognizable faces on television, which constituted his fandom. After ALF in 1990, Gregory had indeed slowed down from acting. He had a few minor roles in TV and movies, but by the mid-1990s, he had mostly retired. He opted to live life well away from the limelight, joining the U.S. Navy and serving for a time. Since leaving Hollywood, Gregory has kept a low profile and avoids living his life in the spotlight. He has dodged the type of stumbling blocks that have tripped up so many of his peers but the memory of Gregory as ALF's Brian Tanner 
brings a surge of tenderness from all fans over the character of Brian Tanner. There you have it, a glimpse into the life, struggles, and tragedy of some of Hollywood's most famous child actors. Feel free to let us know about some others in the comments and we will see you in the next one.